Hello, my name is Pastor Tommy, and thank you for joining us today for our devotion. And today we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 10, verse 45. And I hope this blesses you as it blessed me this past uh, two weeks preparing for this and thinking about it. But uh, let me read the verse, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, when you think about <clears throat> this verse, it reminds you of sacrifice and selfless love. And I think the key component of, of that is, is um, um, service. And this verse speaks about Jesus Christ. He came to earth to serve mankind. It's a powerful reminder, not only that Jesus died for our sins, but that we too were called to love and to help others. It's a marvelous truth that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And the reason that this is important to see is that in the previous verses, just before this one, Jesus had just given his disciples what I would call some out of the comfort zone expectations for them. He had told James and John that they would be required to drink the cup of his suffering. That's in verse 39. He had told the other 10 disciples that if they want to be great in the kingdom, they must be a servant or become a servant of everybody. That's verse 44. So this, this is Jesus giving expectations to them to be totally different from the way that people normally act. They're to serve each other, love all people, including unbelievers, and in that service drink of whatever suffering it will cost. And there is a cost. But that's not the only message of Christianity we need more than for someone just to tell us what we should do and how we should act. We need help. And that's why Jesus says what he says in this verse. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Jesus' example of his life must be the pattern for our lives. When Jesus commands us to do something, it's his way of telling us that he wants to serve us. Our obedience, though, is the key, and it's necessary for Christ to help us as our servant to carry our burdens and to give us his power. Jesus does not need our help. He commands that we obey, and then he offers his help. And this is why becoming a Christian is a humbling experience. We admit what? That we need help. We need his help. We need Christ. When we surrender to Him in that way, Christ becomes our servant. And when He does, all of His commands are no longer things we do for Him, but things He enables us to do for others. The believer's life is a life of serving others in the strength and the power that Christ provides. It is loving others with the love He gives us as our servant. It is sacrificing and suffering with the hope and joy that he gives us as our servant. The last part of the verse that Jesus came to give his life as a ransom for many says that he did not come to be served, but he came to give his life for others, for many. This act of service is intentional. Jesus came to die willingly by choice. In Mark chapter 10, verses 33 through 34, Jesus is on the road going up to Jerusalem. Jesus tells his disciples what would happen to him in Jerusalem. In other words, he's preparing his disciples, but we have to listen to his words of what he's saying. Behold, he says, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. Well, verse 45 tells us why. He came to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus is choosing to suffer. Jesus is choosing to die. Now, a ransom is a payment made to, made to release someone from some kind of bondage, whether it be imprisonment, or debt. Jesus sees his death as a ransom to release many from bondage. He's paying what they cannot pay so that they may go free. 
How awesome that is. He's substituting himself for them. The payment for freedom was his life. Now, according to the scriptures, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his Son. With Christ as our Savior, we are rescued. We are delivered from the punishment or the debt of sin. You see, the heart of the gospel message is that Christ came to give his life a ransom for many, that is, to die for many, to save many from their sin and from its guilt and power and penalty and eternal punishment. That's not just good news, my friends. That is great news. God bless you, and I hope he continues to reveal himself in his scripture to comfort and to lift you up and to encourage you that good things are coming.